above the president if her National League for Democracy party wins the election on Sunday. Your connection to quality cannabis insurance services is spelled K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R. That's Karcher Insurance. We have worked with ventures like Cannabis for over 60 years. We're proud to represent over 50 companies with tailor-made cannabis plans for owners just like you to insure your product, your plants, and your pursuits. K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R spells out their full-service insurance services, ranging from commercial to bonds, to personal, from life to health, and more. Contact the team at CarcherInsurance.com and let our experience work for you. That's K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R Insurance.com. Contact Karen and the team at Karcher Insurance at 1-844-421-3560. That's 844-421-3560. From high atop Mount Soldad in San Diego, California, 100 feet above sea level. Good morning. It's good news with cannabis nurse Heather. This plant is amazing. Positive change is happening. We did it. No matter who you are, you can make a positive impact on the world. I would rather be illegally alive than legally dead. And that quote helped to give you strength. Nurse Heather is only on CannabisRadio.com. Good morning, Cannabis Nurse Heather. Chronicling the Cannabis Crusade. It's time now for the State of Cannabis. Only on CannabisRadio.com. Chronicling the latest cannabis industry news and headlines. Welcome to the State of Cannabis. Bringing you fact-based news and views and keeping listeners on the pulse of what's happening in the industry today. Advocates and analysts will join us to discuss the ongoing path to reform and legislation. Now, the State of Cannabis. With your host, Dave Inman. Welcome to the State of Cannabis, keeping you, our listeners, on the pulse of what's happening in cannabis today. I'm your host, Dave Inman. With us tonight, we have a special guest. She's the founder of several nonprofit groups, Phoenix Normal, Normal in Arizona, the state chapter, Phoenix March, Women for Marijuana, and most recently, Mom Force. She's an activist, educator, and a mom. Please welcome with us tonight, my amazing wife, Kathy Inman. Kathy, thanks for showing up. Well, thank you, sir. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Pleasure's all mine. You know, so there was uh, some earth-shattering, in my opinion, events that occurred over the weekend. You actually put together, I don't want to call it a convention, but necessarily uh, you, you had a speaking engagement geared towards educating seniors about cannabis, and you had a special guest. Who, who was that guest? Yes, sir. It was a small seminar of about 80 to 100 people out there in Sun City, and my special guest speaker was Sheriff Joe Arpaio, America's toughest sheriff. So, yeah, it was a pretty big day last Saturday. Very exciting. What would your gauge be on his acceptance of cannabis? Well, you know, the sheriff has been listening. I've had four meetings with him, the first being a three-hour meeting where he listened to just a ton of information about cannabis. And, you know, it's mostly medically geared. I I have taught him a little bit about history. You know, I've given him the Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack Herrera so that if he had, you know, (laughs) if he thought about it, he could go ahead and thumb through there and expand his knowledge. But it's been mostly medically focused as I am, you know, affiliate of Americans for Safe Access. And, you know, I like to focus on that medical information because it's helping so many seniors. Him being our head senior here in Arizona, I thought, why not? You know, here's a guy who has more influence on the seniors of Arizona than anybody I can think of. He's kind of like Arizona's grandfather. So over the series of four meetings, I was able to get him to agree that, you know, uh, he didn't, he hasn't said in so many words, you know, what he's going to commit to right now because he's in a spot politically. But what he did say on Saturday was that he is, absolutely behind veterans. He wants veterans to feel good. He, you know, he, he's very concerned about, uh, most likely he didn't say it, but he's very concerned about the veterans and the 22 deaths we have every day from uh, suicide. And these folks a lot of times are taking pharmaceuticals that are driving them there, that or alcohol. When we have that natural alternative that keeps them calm, keeps them happy, and, you know, they're able to use it as pain medication without those horrible side effects that, you know, kind of make them feel like they need to 
you know, unfortunately in their life. And so when we have this kind of alternative, I know he recognizes that. He says he's got a heart for veterans. He believes in states' rights. And he, moreover, the biggest thing I thought, he looked at me and he said, this should really just be available uh, through the doctor with a prescription. Why can't we just go to Walgreens? And you know what? That's what every person, so many seniors ask me, why can't we just go and get this at the Walgreens? Well, because it's a schedule one drug right up there with heroin. And so what I've done is I've sent the sheriff a thank you note and told him, you know, can we get you, you know, possibly to help us with your influence and point out that federal fallacy, really, of scheduling marijuana right up there with heroin. Because if he wants us to be able to go to the doctor and get a prescription, perhaps he can help us with that. We, I think we saw a lot of good on Saturday, quite honestly. So tell me, uh, you've obviously met with the sheriff, the toughest sheriff in America several times. And me personally, I'd be shaking my boots. I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, his very staunch stance on crime. And, you know, unfortunately, most of my life, at least, I've been a medical or not medical, but I've been a a cannabis consumer. You know, I have certainly had the dream, you know, uh, running down to uh, your Rite Aid or your Walgreens or Circle K and and scooping up a pack of joints. And that was always my dream. But clearly, you know, uh, actually entering those doors into the sheriff's office, that had to be a very surreal moment the first, second, third, fourth time that you'd actually met this guy. Tell us about your interactions with him. I should start by saying I'm an otherwise law-abiding citizen, that I've been incensed about cannabis prohibition because I really, I like the law. I appreciate the police and and the good work that they do for us. So being an otherwise law-abiding citizen and being someone who I honestly feel, I feel like I'm fighting crime. I feel like cannabis prohibition is a crime. I feel like, you know, and this has not made me very popular, but Quite honestly, street dealers expose our kids to a number of other drugs. So if we can regulate this substance and keep these street dealers from being able to avail our children of all these other drugs, I'm fighting crime. I'm fighting crime across the board. So really, the sheriff and I have quite a bit in common. And that's the, the commonalities are what I was trying to point out when I went to visit him, not just the first time, but every time. And the more information I get about cannabis, the more information I get about the fact that teen drug use is dropping all over the country where we're regulating marijuana in the states where we regulate, this information is absolutely pertinent. And and our lawmakers need to know this. And as a mom, you know, I'm protecting kids. He really appreciates that. There are some lawmakers that have taken notice. I honestly think even Bill Montgomery knows that, you know, there's a section of me that he likes what I'm doing. He understands. And for our listeners who don't know who uh, Bill Montgomery is, he's uh, the Maricopa County Attorney General. He's a staunch uh, opponent to legalization, medical movements of any kind as far as, as cannabis is concerned. He was one of those people that would vehemently oppose anything that that looked like it, you know, looked green in any way, shape or form. You met with him as well a couple of times. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. I got to meet him only because he likes you, sweetheart. You know, Bill Montgomery, our Maricopa County attorney, had actually agreed because I was able to go up to his office and talk with him. He, he allowed me that. And during our, I don't know, half an hour, an hour conversation, we came up that we're going to agree to disagree. And I said, you know, why don't we do this in a public, an open public forum where we can have a beautiful discussion. You can get your points out. I'll get my points out. And we'll just have an open discussion. It wasn't supposed to be a debate or, you know, anything like that. And so what happened? He agreed to that. We had this thing planned. I was pretty excited about it. And then he went and planned three other or two other debates prior to mine and ended up in a bit of hot water because he spouted off at our friend Don, called him an enemy for using medical marijuana in a recreational way because Don, did, you know, he, he's... He was very honest with Bill, and Bill had already been agitated. I mean, he was with a crowd. It was like a circus in that debate, and that's not what I was going to bring to our open discussion. And so Bill kind of stepped in some hot water, and I ended up not losing the debate but losing the opportunity to have the open discussion because he wasn't able to do any more public appearances. (laughs) So, So instead of the public appearance, he was very sweet enough to go ahead and sit down and have breakfast with me for an hour and a half. And, you know, he's a likable fellow one-on-one. He really is. But he is staunchly against marijuana. He absolutely feels that it's kind of the end of the world if we, if we legalize it. And 
you know, it's all about the kids. And unfortunately, Bill's last email to me was, you know, we, we had an email exchange of facts and, and I can't remember why we ended up talking again on the email, but we, we did and we got into it. And his last email was just really not full of um, the good science that I'm looking for. So we've kind of left on an interesting note. And we'll never, I don't know where that will end up, but I really feel that Bill should come to one of these open forums and, and you know, have some public discussion because we need to go over these facts and, and point out to the folks that there are really good facts on our side. And the facts that they have on their side are kind of, you know, they're using things that aren't science. They're using things that are more like, you know, they're referencing people like Kevin Sabat, who is probably the nation's most anti-marijuana person. He's one of the heads of SAM, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, which is pretty much the head prohibitionist organization in, in America. And Bill likes to point to things that man says as a reference. It's kind of like if I went ahead and pointed to something Rob Campia said and said, hey, marijuana is great because Campia says this. It just doesn't wash. These people don't have any science. The science that they do have points to the detriment of children using marijuana too much. Well, I'm with that. The children don't need to be using marijuana. I'm completely with that. Kids need to stay away from drugs, both legal and illegal. The kids absolutely need to be kept clean of any kind of substance. You know, in a developing brain, you, you let it develop just like you don't have a, you know, an eight year old lift weights. Kathy, we got to take a quick break. Folks, when we get back, we have Kathy Enman, my lovely wife. We'll be right back with you, folks. State of Cannabis. Stay tuned for more State of Cannabis, only on CannabisRadio.com when we return. MJWellness.com the largest medical marijuana community in the world. Connect with thousands of patients, doctors, industry leaders, and businesses through shared personal experiences along our worldwide network. Discover new therapies and benefits with content tailored to you. Come grow your network on mjwellness.com. You're not alone. Your wellness matters. Learn, live, and thrive. Check out mjwellness.com today. Your connection to quality cannabis insurance services is spelled K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R. That's Karcher Insurance. We have worked with ventures like cannabis for over 60 years. We're proud to represent over 50 companies with tailor-made cannabis plans for owners just like you to insure your product, your plants, and your pursuits. K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R spells out their full-service insurance services, ranging from commercial to bonds, to personal, from life to health, and more. Contact the team at CarterInsurance.com and let our experience work for you. That's K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R Insurance.com. Contact Karen and the team at Karcher Insurance at 1-844-421-3560. That's 844-421-3560. Educator, author, and advocate, Dr. Mitch Earlywine is here to tackle the burning issues. And I'm here to clear up the myths about cannabis and burn them away with science. CannabisRadio.com presents a no-holds-barred platform that seeks to redefine and revolutionize the entire scope of the cannabis culture while opening the door for more to join the cannabis crusade. Dr. Kevin Hill. You can't ignore the fact that, like alcohol, most people who use don't have a problem, so I think that you need to think about policy in that way while educating people properly about marijuana. I think that's the way to go. Burning Issues, only on CannabisRadio.com. Chronicling the latest cannabis industry news and headlines, welcome back to the State of Cannabis, only on CannabisRadio.com. Once again, here's Dave Inman. Welcome back to the State of Cannabis. I'm your host, Dave Inman. With us tonight, we have my lovely wife, Kathy Inman, who has been out just, you know, really making a splash in not only the cannabis community, but certainly within our uh, legislatures, within our police force, 
with our lawmakers. And I can't thank you enough for, for doing what you're doing. We were just talking about just a moment ago about Ken Sabat, the founder of SAM, which is just kind of like a dare on steroids, something that as a activists need to pay attention to and try and debunk as often as possible. We're also talking about an amazing event that uh, happened Saturday where uh, she was actually able to corral the toughest sheriff in the country to come and talk. 